It probably looks exaggerated, but actually the picture loses a lot. Alright, that happened to the four main ones. Is that
sleep upstairs. I'm waiting for her to see us. You know, it's funny. What? Larry was born in August. He'd been 27 this month, and his tree blows down. I'm surprised. You remember his birthday, Frank? That's nice. Well, I'm working on his horoscope. What a horoscope. That's for the future, ain't it? What I'm doing is this. Larry was reported on November 25th, right? Yeah. Well then, we can assume that he was killed. It was on November 25th. Now what Kate wants... Oh, Kate wants you to make the horoscope. What? What she wants to find out whether November 25th was a favorable day for Larry. What is that? Favorable day? A favorable day for a person is a fortunate day, according to his stars. In other words, it's practically impossible for a man to have died in his favorable day. Well, was that his favorable day in November 25th? That's what I'm working on to find out. It takes time. See, the point is, if November 25th was his favorable day, then it's completely possible he's alive someplace. Because, I mean, it's possible. Oh, I didn't even see you. Is he talking sense? Him? Uh, he's okay. He's just completely out of his mind. The trouble with you is, you don't believe in anything. And your trouble is, you believe in anything. Hey, did you see my kid this morning? No. Hey, Max, walked out with his thermometer right out of his bed. <laughs> What's the problem? He meets a girl, he takes a temperature. <laughs> that boy's going to be a real doctor. He's smart. Over oh, my dead body, he'll be a doctor. Why? That's an honorable profession. Frank, will you stop talking like a cynic? Perfect. I saw a movie a couple of weeks ago. Reminded me of you. There was a doctor in that picture. John Amici. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, yeah. And he was in his basement discovering things. That's what you ought to do. You could help humanity instead of... Oh, I could help humanity. I don't want her, brother. Sell it. <laughs> very good, Jim. <laughs> hey, where's the pretty girl supposed to be here? Annie Kate? Sleeping upstairs. We picked it up off the water clock train last night. Wonderful thing. Girl leaves here, the scrawny kid. A couple of years later, she's a regular woman. Hardly recognize her. She was running out of this yard all her life. That was a very happy family used to live in your house, Jim. Yeah, well, that's something the black could do with a pretty girl. Uh, there ain't nothing to look at in this neighborhood. Say, my wife, of course. Mr. Adams is on the phone with you, dog. Such as the circumstance when you prevail. Oh, don't sniff around me. My love, my life. <laughs> and give her a nasty answer. Smell a perfume over the phone. What's the matter with her now? Oh, I don't know, dear. She sounds as though she's in terrible pain. Unless, of course, her mouth is full of candy. Ah, why don't you just tell the old lady down? Oh, she enjoys it much more when you tell it to lady down. And when are you going to visit Mr. Hubbard? Mr. Hubbard is not sick. I've got more to do with my time than sit and hold his hand. Well, it seems to me that for ten dollars you could hold his hand. Oh. Your kid ready to play golf? If not, is he ready to go around the world for the next 30 years? <laughs> Why do you need him? He's a doctor. Women are supposed to call him up. Oh, last night was Mrs. Adams is on the phone. Say, can I have some new password? Yeah, sure, sure. You were a nurse too long, Susie. You're too, too realistic. <laughs> now, you said it. Frank! Oh, hiya! Frank! The toaster's I... off again. Plug it in. That just fixed it. Oh, please, Frank. Fix it back like it was before. I don't know why you can't learn to turn on a simple thing like a toaster. <laughs> Thomas Edison. Oh, he really is very handy. What happened to your tree? Did the wind get it? Yes, that's nice. What a pity. Did Annie get in? Yes, yeah, she'll be down soon. Wait till you meet her, Sue. She's a knockout. You know, I should have been a man. People are always introducing me to beautiful women. Hey, tell us to come over later and see what we did sure. with her house. Sure. And thanks. Is she still unhappy, Joe? Hey. Don't suppose she goes around dancing on her toes, but she seems to be over it. It's strange. Annie, you are not even married. And I've got three babies. Mm. I always thought it'd be the other way around. Well, that's what a war does. I have two sons. Now I got only one. You changed all the tallies. You know, in my day, it was an honor to have sons. A doctor could make a million dollars today if he could figure out a way to bring a boy into the world without a trigger finger. Yeah, I was just reading about that one. Oh, hi, Chris. Lydia, come in here. If you want the toaster to work, don't plug in the morning mixer. Did I? Yeah, and the next time I fix something, don't tell me I'm crazy. Now, come in here. I'll never live this one down. So what's the difference? Instead of a toast, have a motive. No. <laughs> you want the paper? That's all right, just a book section. You're always reading the book section, and you never buy a book. I like to keep abreast of my ignorance. What is that? Every week a new book comes out? Lots 
thousand U books, all different, all different. Can I help you? Mother's giving the breakfast in the dining room. See what happened to the tree. Yeah. What's mother gonna say? Maybe, maybe you ought to tell her before she sees it. She saw it. Ha, she see it. I, I was the first one up. She was still in bed. She was out here when it broke. Well, about four this morning. I heard a crack and I looked out. You're standing right there when he cracked in front of her. What was she doing out here at four in the morning? I don't know, but when it cracked, she ran back in the kitchen and cried. Did you talk to her? No. I figured it was better to leave her alone. She cried hard. She hit her right through the floor of my bedroom. What was she doing out here at that hour? She's dreaming about it again. She's wandering around at night. Yes, she is. She's getting just like after he died. What's the meaning of that? I don't know the meaning of it. But I know one thing, Dad. You made a terrible mistake with Mother. Why? Being dishonest with her. That kind of thing pays off. Now it's paying off. What do you mean, dishonest? You know Larry's not coming back, and I know it. So why don't you allow to go and think and we believe with her? What do you want to do? Argue with her? I don't want to argue with her. It's time she realized that nobody believes Larry's alive anymore. Why shouldn't she dream of him? Walk the nights waiting for him. Do we contradict her? Do we say straight out we haven't had any hope anymore? We haven't had any hope for years now? You can't say that. We've true. got to say it to her. How are you going to prove it? Can you prove it? For God's sake, three and a half years. Nobody comes back after three and a half years. It's insane. To you it is, and to me, but not to her. You can talk yourself blue in the face, but there's no body and there's no grave. So where are you? Sit down, Dad. I want to talk to you. Oh, there's these goddamn newspapers. Every month some boy comes back. All from right, home, all so. right. Now listen to me. You know why I stand here, don't you? Why? You know. Well, I got an idea, but what's the story? I'm going to ask her to marry me. Well, that's only your business, Chris. You know it's not only my business. What do you want me to do? You're old enough to know your own mind. So it's all right, I'll go ahead with it. Well, you want to be sure your so mother... So isn't just my business. I'm just saying. You infuriate me, you know that? Isn't it your business too if I tell Mother and she throws a fit about it? You have such a talent for ignoring things. I ignore what I gotta ignore. That girl is Larry's girl. She's not Larry's From girl. From Mother's point of view, he is not dead. And you have no right to take his girl. Now you can go on from there if you know where to go. But I don't know where to go, see? I don't know. Now what can I do for you? Don't know why it is, but every time I reach out for something I want, I have to pull back as other people will suffer. My whole bloody life, time after time after time. You're a considerate fella, Chris. There's nothing wrong with that. To hell with that. Did you uh, ask any yet? No. How do you know she'll marry you? Maybe she feels the same way Mother does. Well, if she does, that's the end of it. From her letters, I think she's forgotten. I'll find out. Then we'll sort this out with Mother. Right, Dad? Don't avoid me. Trouble is, you don't see enough women. You never did. So what? I'm not fast with women. I don't see why it has to be Annie. Because it is. Mm, that's a good answer, but it don't answer nothing. You haven't seen her since you went to the war. It's five years. I grew up next door to her. When I think of someone for my wife, I think of Annie. What, you want a diagram? I don't want no diagram. She thinks he's coming back. Now, you marry that girl, you're pronouncing him dead. What's that gonna do to mother? Do you know? I don't. All right then, Dad. Give it some more thought. I've given it three years of thought. It's not maybe if I left it a while. Mother would forget Larry. Then we'd have a regular wedding. Everybody happy. That can't happen here, and I'll get out. What the hell is this? I'll get out. Live someplace else. Maybe New York. Are you crazy? I've been a good son too long. A good sucker. I'm through with it. You got a business here. What the hell is this? Business? Business doesn't inspire me. Must you be inspired? Yeah. I like it an hour a day. If I have to grow up for money all day long, Mr. Stevens, I want it beautiful. I want a family. I want some kids. I want something I can give myself to. Annie's in the middle of that right now. So where do I find it? Tell me something. 
You mean you leave the business on this hour? Well, you don't want to think like that. Then help me stay here. Why? But don't think like that, because what the hell did I work for? It? Only for you, Chris. The whole damn shooting match is for you. I know that. Just you have to stay here, Dad. All right. Don't think like that. You hear me? I am thinking like that. I don't understand you, do I? No. I'm a pretty tough guy. Yeah, I can see that. Joe, did you take a bag from under the sink? Yeah, put it in the pail. Well, get it out of the pail. That's my potatoes. <laughs> I thought it was garbage. Would you do me a favor, Joe? Don't be helpful. I can afford another bag of potatoes. Many scoured that pail in boiled water last night. It's cleaner than your teeth. And I don't see why, after I worked 40 years and I got a maid, that I have to take out the garbage. If you would make up your mind that every bag in the kitchen is full of garbage, you wouldn't be throwing out my vegetables. Last time it was the onions. I don't like garbage in the house. Then don't eat. <laughs> that sounds you for the day. Yeah, I'm in last place again. <laughs> I don't know, once upon a time I used to think when I got money and I got me a maid, my wife could take it easy. And now I got me money and I got me maid, and my wife is working for the maid. So day off, what are you crabbing about? Danny finished eating you? Sugar right out. Well, that wind did some job on this place. So much for that, thank God. Come and sit down, take it easy. It's such a funny pain on the top of my head. Can I get you an aspirin? No more no. Funny how everything seems to happen at the same time. This month is his birthday. Tree blows down. And it comes. Seems like everything that happened before is coming back. I was just down in the basement, and what do I stumble over? Baseball glove. I haven't seen Dad in centuries. Don't you think Annie looks well? Fine. There's no question about it. She's a beauty. Although I still don't know what brought her here. Not that I'm not glad to I, see I her. I just thought that I'd like to see her again. And I wanted to see her myself. The only thing is, I think her nose got longer. <laughs> but I'll always love that girl. She's one that didn't jump in a bed but somebody else as soon as it happened with her fellow. Hey, what's that? Oh, say. Never mind. Most of them didn't even wait till the telegrams were open. But I'm just glad she came. So you can see I'm not completely out of my mind. Just because she isn't married doesn't mean she's more than Larry. Why then, isn't she? Well, it could be any number of things. Like what, for instance? Well, whatever it is. Can I get you an aspirin? It's not like a headache. You don't sleep, that's why. She's wearing out more bedroom slippers than shoes. I had a terrible <coughs> night. I never had a night like that. What was it, Mom? Did you dream? More. More than a dream. About Larry? I was fast asleep. Remember the way he used to fly low past the house when he was in training? When we used to see his face in the cockpit going by. That's how I saw him. Only high up, way, way up where the clouds are. He was so real I could reach out and touch him. And suddenly he started to fall and cry and cry to me, Mom, Mom. I could hear him like he was in the room. Mom, it was his voice. And I knew if I could reach him, I knew I could stop him. If I could only... I woke up. It was funny. It was like the roaring of his engine. I came out here. I must have still been half asleep. But I could hear that roaring like he was going by. The tree snapped right in front of me. Had I had any more weight? You see, we should never have planted that tree. I said so in the first place. It was too soon to plant a tree for him. Too soon? We rushed into it. Everybody was in such a hurry to bury him. I said not to plant it yet. Mother, it. mother, the wind blew it down. What significance is that, God? Mother, don't put yourself through it again. It's not worth it. It doesn't do any good. You know, I've been thinking. Maybe it's time you could remind us to forget Larry. That's the third time you've said 
that bit for me? Because it's not right. We never took up our lives again. We're like at a railroad station waiting for a train and never comes in. Give me an answer, huh? Sure. I was thinking, maybe the four of us could go for dinner down at the shore tonight. Maybe go dance. Fine. We could do it tonight. Well, with me. Sure, we'll have some fun. You can start with this aspirin. Why did he invite her here? Why? Does that bother you? She's been in New York for the past three and a half years. Why all of a sudden? Maybe he just wanted to see her again. Nobody comes 700 miles just to see you. What do you mean? He lived next door to the girl all his life. Why shouldn't he want to see her again? Don't look at me like that. He didn't tell me any more than he told you. He's not going to marry her. How do you know he's even thinking of it? It's got bad about it. Well, so what? Well, what's going on here, Joe? Now listen. Kate. She's not his girl, Joe. She knows she's not. You can't read her mind. Then why is she still single? New York is full of men. Why isn't she married? There's probably a hundred people told her she's foolish. But she waited. How do you know why she waited? Because she knows what I know. That's why. She's as faithful as a rock. In my worst moments, I think of her waiting. And I know again that I'm right. Look, it's a nice day. What are we arguing for? Nobody in this house dare take her faith away, Joe. Strangers might. But not his father and not his brother. What do you want me to do? What do you want? I want you to act like he's coming back, both of you. Don't think I haven't noticed you since Chris invited her here. I won't stand for any nonsense. But Kate. Because if he's not coming back, then I'll kill myself. Oh, laugh, laugh at me. But look what happened to the very night she came back. Oh, laugh. But there are meanings in such things. She goes to sleep in his room and his memorial breaks in pieces. Look at it. Look, Joe. Calm yourself. Believe with me, Joe. I can't stand all alone. Calm yourself. Only last week a man turned up in Detroit and missed me even longer than Larry. You read it yourself. All right, all right. Calm yourself. You above all have got to believe. You. Why me above all? Just don't stop believing. What does that mean? Me above all? Look. Look at you shaking. I can't help it. What have I got to hide? What the hell is the matter with you, Kate? I didn't say you had anything to hide. I'm just telling you to stop it. Now stop it. Hiya, Joe. Take a breath of that air, kid. Don't get out of that in New York. Annie, where did you get that dress? I couldn't resist. I'm taking it right off before I ruin it. How's that for three weeks, Sally? Oh, with a chicken Oh, it's gorgeous. My gorgeous. Didn't see the prettiest gal you ever saw? You gained a little weight, didn't you, darling? <laughs> it comes and goes. Look how nice her legs turned out. Boy, the <laughs> mother's got legs, doesn't he? I was right, three years. We'll get it all, kid. How did Mom like New York? Why did they take that ham off away? No, no. No, they broke a couple of years ago. What broke? He had one of his light lunches and flopped into it. How'd he do? Hey. She looks intelligent. <laughs> and this is Jim, Dr. Bayless. Oh, sure. I he mean, writes a lot about you. Oh, but don't you believe that? He loves everybody, I think. <laughs> and of an Italian they used to call him Mother Michaela. <laughs> I can believe it. You know, it's so strange seeing the guy out of the yard. I guess I never grew up. It almost seems that Mom and Pop are in there now. With you and my brother doing algebra. And Larry trying to copy my homework. Gosh, those dear dead days beyond the I hope this doesn't mean you want me to revive. Jim, come in here. Mr. Hubbard's on the phone. Oh, honey, I told you. Please be a please. All right, Susie. Okay. And we just met. Can I give you a piece of advice? When you marry, never, not even in your mind, count your husband's money. Jim. I'm coming, Susie. Coming. It'd be a common interest for him. Well, he loves the guitar. Let's sit at the shore tonight. Hurry some fella up here like we used to before Larry went. You think of it. You see, she thinks of it. But what do you mean, Kate? Nothing. Just that you remember him. He's in your thoughts. That's a funny thing to say. How can I help remembering him? Did you hang out your face? Yeah. Say, you've sure got him for clothes. I could hardly 
find my room in the closet. No, don't you remember? That's Larry's room. Larry's? Didn't you recognize him? What occurred to me? I mean, his shoes are all shiny. Oh, yes, dear. For so long, I've been aching to have a nice conversation with you. Come and tell me something. What? So, I don't know. Something nice. She makes you go out, Mother. Oh, shut up. And are any of them serious? Why don't you go to choke? <laughs> any. You can't go into a restaurant anymore with that woman. In five minutes, 39 strange people are sitting around the table telling her their life story. If I can't ask Danny a personal question. Asking is all right, but don't beat her over the head with it. You're beating her, you're beating her. Don't let them boogle you. Ask me anything you like. What do you want to know? Come on, let's go. She's the only one who's got any sense around here. <laughs> Your mom. She's not getting a divorce, huh? No, she's calmed down about it now. I think when she gets out, they'll probably live together in New York, of course. Well, that's fine. Because your father, well, he's a decent man after all he said about I don't care. She can take him back if she likes. And you? You go out much? You're still waiting for him? Well, no, I don't expect you to wait for him, but that's what you mean, isn't it? Well, yes. Well, I'm not. You're not? Isn't ridiculous? I mean, you don't really matter. I know, dear, but, but don't say it's ridiculous, because the papers were full of it. I don't know about New York, but there was a half a page on a man missing even longer than Larry, and he turned up from Burma. Couldn't have wanted to come home very badly, Mom. Don't be so smart. Well, you could have a hell of a time in Burma. <laughs> so I've heard. Mother, you must be the only person that You're sure? Yes, I am. Well, if you're sure, then you're sure. See, don't say it on the radio. But I'm sure that in the dark of night, they're all still waiting for their son. Mother, you're absolutely... Oh, no, don't be so damn smart. There are just a few things that you don't know. All of them. I'm going to tell you one of them, man. Deep, deep in your heart, you've always been waiting for it. No, Kate. But deep in your heart, Annie. She ought to know, shouldn't she? Don't let them tell you what to think. Listen to your heart. Only your heart. Why does your heart tell you he's alive? Because he has to but be. But why, Kate? Because certain things have to be, and certain things can never be. Well, like the sun has to rise, it has to be. That's why there's God, otherwise anything could happen. But there's God. So certain things can never happen. I would know it. Just like I knew the day he went in that terrible wall. Did you write me? Was it in the papers? No. That morning I couldn't raise my head off the pillow. last joke. And suddenly I knew. I knew, and he was almost killed that day. Annie, you know I'm right. No, Kate. I have to have some tea. Annie. Oh, my friend, you're going gray. He's got responsibility. <laughs> Without Frank, the stars wouldn't know when to come out. <laughs> you look more woman me. You look mature. <laughs> You're a married man. <laughs> Are you still haberdashering? Why not? Maybe I too can get to be president. <laughs> How's your brother? Got his degree, I hear. Oh, George is his own office now. Don't see. And your dad, is he? Fine. I'll be in to see Lydia. How about it? Is that expect for Rosa? I really don't know. I, I mean, because I feel, you know, that if an intelligent man like your father gets put in prison, there ought to be a law that says either you execute him or let him go after a year. Want a hand with that ladder, Frank? That's all right. I'll think so hard to later, Kate. You look wonderful, man. See you later. How did they stop talking about Dad? Nobody talks about him anymore. Gone and forgotten, Kate. Tell me. Because I don't want to meet anybody in the block if they're friends. I don't want you to worry about it. Still remember the case, Joe? They talk about you? Only one who talks about it is my wife. That's because you keep playing policeman with the kids. 
All the parents ever hear out of you is jail, jail, jail. Actually, what happens is when I get out of the penitentiary, I come home and the kids got rather interested in me. I was, I was a sort of expert on the jail situation, you know, kids. Well, when time went by, things got a bit confused and I ended up a detective. <laughs> Except that they didn't get it confused. He hands out police badges from the post toasting box. <laughs> Gosh, it's wonderful to hear you laughing about it. Well, what'd you expect? The last thing I remember in this block was one word. Murderers. Remember that, Kate? Mrs. Hamlin standing out in front of our house and yelling that word. She's still around, I suppose. Mm -hmm. They're all still around. Don't listen to her. Every Saturday night, the whole gang is still in here in this arbor playing poker. Them is called murderer, taking all my money now. Don't joke. She's a sensitive girl, don't fool her. They still talk about that. Well, it's all right with him. He was exonerated. Your father's still there. That's why I wasn't so enthusiastic about your coming. Honestly, I know how sensitive you are, and I told Listen, Chris that they... you do like I did, and you'll be all right. Okay, I got home. I got out of my car, not in front of the house, but on the corner. You should have been there, Annie. You too, Chris. You'd have seen something. Everybody knew I was coming out that day. The porches was loaded. The story was, I'd, I'd got myself a full fast one, getting myself exonerated. <laughs> so I got out of my car, and I walked down the street, but slowly, and with a smile. I was the beast. The beast! The guy who sold cracked cylinder heads to the Army Air Force. The guy who made 21 P-40s crash in Australia. Kid walking down the street that day, I was guilty as hell. Except I wasn't. I was a court paper in my pocket to prove I wasn't. <laughs> so, I walked past the porches. Result, 40 months later, I got one of the best shops in the state again. Respected man again. Bigger than ever. Show me guts. That's the only way to lick of his guts. <laughs> That's why you made a big mistake, Annie, moving away from here. You make it tough on your father when he gets out. I'd like to see him move back right into this block. How could they move back? Ain't gonna end too late like that. Till people play cards with him again. Smile at him and talk with him. You play cards with a man, you know he can't be a murderer. And the next time you write, Dad, I'd like you to tell him just what I said. You hear? Don't you hold anything against him? Annie, I never believed in crucifying people. But he was your partner. He dragged you through the mud. Well, he ain't my sweetheart, but you gotta forgive, don't you? You either can't, don't you feel anything? The next time you write, Dad... I do not write him. Again? I've never written to him. Neither does my brother. Say, do you feel this way, too? He murdered 21 pilots. What the hell kind of talk is that? That's not a thing to say about a man. What else can you say? When they took him away, I followed him. I went to him every visiting day. I was crying all the time. Until the news came about that. Then I realized, it's wrong to pity a man like that. Father or no father, there's only one way to look at him. He knowingly shipped out parts that would crash an airplane. And how do you know Larry wasn't one of them? Oh, I was waiting for that. And as long as you're here, I want to ask you to never say that again. You surprised me. I thought you'd be mad. What your father did had nothing to do with Larry. Nothing. But we can't do As that. long as you're here. Okay. Put that out of your mind. Because... That's all. That's enough. Now come inside and have some tea with me. And it was one thing you... He, he's not dead, so there's no argument. Now come. In a minute. Now listen, Annie. That's enough, Dad. No, she doesn't want to hear it. Now cut it out. What's the matter with you? You want to go like this? What's the matter with you? Those P-40s went to... Larry never flew a P-40. So who flew the P-40s? Pigs? The man was a fool. But don't make a murder around him. You got no sense? Look what it's doing to her. Listen. Now both of you, you've got to appreciate what was doing in that shop in the wall. It, it was a madhouse. Every half hour, the major calling for more cylinder heads. They was whipping us with the telephone. The, the trucks was hauling them away. Hot down there. I mean, just try and see human. Just human. All of a sudden, Batch comes out 
with a crack. Okay, that happens. That's the business. So, he's a little man, your father. Always afraid of loud voices. What will the major say? Half a day's production shop. What will I say? Know what I mean? So, he takes out his tools and covers over the cracks. Okay, that's bad. That's wrong. But that's what a little man does. If I could have gone in that day, I'd have told him. Junk him, Steve. We could afford it. But alone, he was afraid. I know he meant no harm. He believed they'd hold up 100%. Okay, that's a mistake. But it ain't murder. And you mustn't think that way, Annie. It ain't right. Let's forget it, Joe. Annie. The day the news came in about Larry, he was in the next cell to me, your dad. And he cried, and he cried half the night. He should have cried all night. Annie, I do not understand you why you stop it. Don't yell at him. He just wants everybody happy. That's my sentiment. Did you stand steak and champagne? Now you're operating. Our full sponsors for the table. Big night tonight, Annie. Can't yeah, scare me. I like that girl. Wrap her up. You got nice legs, Annie. <laughs> I want to see everybody drunk tonight. Look at him, he's blushing. <laughs> Drink your tea, Casanova. Isn't he a great guy? You're the only one I know who loves his parents. I know. Kind of out of fashion, didn't it? It's all right. Good thing. You know, it's lovely here. The air is sweet. You're not sorry, Kate? Not sorry, no. But I'm not going to stay. Why? Well, in the first place, your mother as much as told me to go. Well? You saw that. And then you. Well, you've been kind of... What? Well, kind of embarrassed ever since I got here. Well, trouble is, I kind of plan to sneak up on you over a period of a week or so. They think we're already set. I knew they would. Your mother, anyway. How did you know? From her point of view, why else would I come? Well, would you want to? I mean, I guess you know that's why I asked you here. This is why I came. Annie, I love you. I love you a great deal. I love you. <laughs> no imagination. That's all I know what to say. I'm embarrassing you. I didn't want to ask you here. I wanted some place we were brand new. You don't think it's right here, do you? This yard, this chair. I just wanted you to be ready for me. I didn't want to bring you away from anything. Chris, I've been ready a long, long time. Then he's gone forever, you sure? I almost got married two years ago. Why didn't you? You started to write to me. Felt something that far back? Every day since. Well, why didn't you tell me? So then you never wrote, and then when you did, what did you say? You sure can be ambiguous, you know. Give me a kiss, Annie. Give me a kiss. God, I kissed you, Annie. I kissed Annie. How long? How long I've been waiting to kiss you? I'll never forgive you. Why did you wait all these years? All I've done is sit and wonder if I was crazy for thinking about you. I'm going to make you so happy. We're going to live now. Not like that, you're not. I kissed you. Like Andy's brother. Not like you, Chris. What is it, Chris? Let's drive someplace. I want to be alone with you. No. What is it, Chris? Your mother? No, nothing like that. Then what's wrong? Even in your letters, there was something ashamed. Yes, I was, sir. But it's gone from me now. You've got to tell me. I don't know how to stop. It wouldn't work this way. It's mixed up with so many other things. Remember overseas? I was in command of a company. Yeah, sure. Well, I lost them. How many? Just about all. It takes a lot of time to forget that. Because they weren't just men. For instance, one boy came up to me after he'd been raiding for several days. It was last pair of dry socks in my pocket. Now that's all the little thing. That's the kind of guys I had. 
They didn't die. They killed themselves for one another. I mean that exactly. A little bit more selfish and they'd still be here today. Got me thinking watching them go down. Everything's been destroyed. Something new has been made. What kind of responsibility. Man for man. You know what I mean? To show that. To bring that onto this earth as some kind of honor. So that everybody could feel standing there behind them. And it'd make a difference to them. Then I came home. It was incredible. Nothing had changed. To them, it was some sort of bus accident. I went back to work with Dad in that rat race. And I felt, like he said, ashamed. Nothing had changed. Just seemed to make suckers out of a lot of guys. I felt wrong to be alive, to drive the car, to open the van book, to see the new refrigerator. You can take these things out of a war, but you gotta know when you're driving that car that it came from a love man has for man. Unless you know that, all you've got is blue. There's blood on it. I didn't want any of that. I guess that included you. You still feel that way? I want you now, Anne. Because you mustn't feel that way anymore. Because you have a right to whatever you have. Everything, Chris, understand that? To me, too. And the money? There's nothing wrong in your money. Your father put hundreds of planes in the air. He should be proud. A man should be paid for that. Annie, I'm going to make your fortune. What will I do? Something happened? He's uh, coming here? 
told me to be all right. Sure. Fine. Your father took sick? No. George didn't say he was sick. I... Oh, I don't know. I suppose it's something stupid. You know my brother. Say, let's go for the drive or something. Sure. Now the car keys, Dad? Drive through the park. It's beautiful now. Be back soon. Come on, Annie. See ya. Take your time. What did George want? He's been in Columbus all morning with the He's got to see Annie right away, he said. What for? I don't know. He's a lawyer now, Joe. George is a lawyer. All these years, he never even sent a postcard to Steve. Since he got back from the war, not a postcard. So what? Suddenly, he takes an airplane from New York to see him. An airplane? Well, so? Why? I don't read minds, do you? Why, Joe? What does Steve suddenly have to tell him that he takes an airplane to see him? What do I care what Steve's got to tell him? You sure, Joe? Yeah, I'm sure. Be smart now, Joe. The boy is coming. Be smart. One cent for all. Did you hear what I said? I said I'm sure. All right, Joe. Just be smart.
they ought to be here any minute now. Will you have a cold drink? Oh, I will, thanks. Oh, my husband. Too hot to drive me to the beach. <laughs> you know, men are like little boys. For the neighbors, they'll always cut the grass. People like to do things for the Kellers. Been that way since I can remember. Yeah, it's amazing. I guess your brother's coming to give you a wave, huh? I don't know. I suppose. Oh, dear. Oh, no, nerved up. Oh, it's always a problem getting yourself married, isn't it? Well, that depends on your shape, of course. I don't see why you should have had a problem. I had chances. Oh, I'll bet. Oh, it's just so romantic. Very unusual to me to be marrying the brother of his sweetheart. I don't know. I think it's most of it. Whenever I've needed somebody to tell me the truth, I've always thought of Chris. When he tells you something, you know it's so. He relaxes me. And you've got money. That's important, you know. What matters me? Oh, you'd be surprised. It makes all the difference. I married an intern. On my salary. That was bad, because as soon as a woman starts to support a man, he owes her something. You can never owe someone without resenting them. <laughs> oh, that's true, you know. Underneath, I think the doctor is very devoted. Oh, certainly. But it's bad when a man always sees the bars in front of him. Jim thinks he's in jail all the time. Oh, that's why I've been intending to ask a small favor of you, Anne. It's something very important to me. Oh, well, certainly, if I can do it. Oh, you can. When you take up housekeeping, try to find a place away from here. Are you fooling? I'm very serious. My husband is is upset with Chris around. Well, how's that? Jim's a successful doctor, but he's got an idea he'd like to do medical research. Discover things, you see. Well, isn't that good? <laughs> research pays $25 a week minus laundering the hair shirt. You gotta give up your life to go in the way. So how does Chris? Chris makes people want to be better than it's possible to be. He does that to is that bad? My husband has a family here. Every time he has a session with Chris, he, he feels as though he's, he's compromising by not giving up everything for research. As though Chris or anyone else isn't compromising. Happens with Jim every couple of years. He meets a man and makes a statue out of him. Well, maybe he's right. I don't mean the Chris is statue. No, he's not right. I don't agree with you, Chris. <laughs> Let's face it, dear. Chris is working with his father, isn't he? He's taking money out of that business every week in the year. What of it? You ask me what of it? I certainly do. You ought to cast aspersions like that. I'm surprised at you. You're surprised at me. He wouldn't take five cents out of that plan if there was anything wrong with it. You know that? I know it. You know that. I know I resent everything you said. I know it. I resent everything you said. You know what I resent, dear? Oh, please, I don't want to argue. I resent living next door to the Holy Family. It makes me look like a bum, you understand? Well, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> Who is he to ruin a man's life? Everybody knows Joe pulled a fast one to get out of jail. That's not true. Then go out and talk to people. Go on, go and talk to them. There's not a person in the block who doesn't know the truth. That's a lie. People come here all the time for cars oh, and so stuff. Oh, so what? They give him credit for being smart. I do too. I have nothing against Joe. But if Chris wants people to put on the hair shirt, let him take off the broadcloth. He's driving my husband crazy with that phony idealism of his. And I am about at the end of my rope on it. Oh, Chris. How's mother? I'm George King. No, no, it was just that. Susie, do me a favor, will you? Come and see if you can calm Mother down. She's all worked up. She still doesn't know about you two. She senses it, I guess. You know my mother. Oh, yeah. She's done. <coughs> Maybe there's something in the medicine chest. Tell you what, I'll give her one of everything. <laughs> oh, don't worry about Kate. Give her a couple of drinks, dance her around a little. She'll love Anne. Because you are the female version of him. Oh, don't be alarmed, dear. I said version. Interesting woman, isn't she? Oh, yeah. She's very interesting. You know, she's a great nurse. She's Are you still doing that? Doing what? As soon as you get to know somebody, you find a distinction for them. How do you know she's a great nurse? What's the matter, then? The woman hates you. She despises you. What's hit you? Gee, Chris. What happened to you? Never... Why didn't you tell me? Tell me what? She says they think Joe is guilty. Who cares what?
what they think. I don't care what they think. I just don't understand why you took the trouble to deny it. You said it was all forgotten. I know a lot of people think my father's guilty. And I assume there might be some doubt in your mind. I never once said I suspected him. Nobody says it. Chris, I know how much you love your father, but it could never... Do you never... think I could honestly forgive him if he'd done such a thing? I'm not here out of the blue sky, Chris. I've turned my back on my father. If there's anything wrong I here I know now, that, Anne. George is coming from Dad, and I don't think it's worth a blessing. He's welcome here. You've got nothing to fear from George. Tell me that. The man is innocent, Anne. Remember how his father accused once and put him through hell? How would you feel if you were faced with that again? Annie, there's nothing wrong for you here. Believe me, kid. Every time I come out here, it looks like Playland. Thought you were going to shave. In a minute, I just got up. Don't worry, I can't see. You look shaved. Oh, no. Gotta be extra special tonight, eh? Big night. <laughs> so, how does it feel to be a married woman? I don't know yet. What's the matter? You slip it. The great Rue. And what is that, Rue? It's French. Don't talk dirty. <laughs> you ever met a bigger ignoramus? <laughs> well, somebody's gotta make a living. That's telling. I don't know. Everybody's getting so goddamn educated in this country. But nobody's to take out the garbage. It's getting so the only dumb ones left are the buses. You're not so dumb, Joe. I know, I know. But take our plan, for instance. I got so many lieutenants, majors, and colonels, I'm ashamed to ask somebody sweep the floor. I'm afraid I'll insult somebody. No kidding. It's a tragedy. You stand on the street today and spit, you're gonna hit a college man. Well, don't spit there. <laughs> I know. It's coming to a pass. I've been thinking, uh, Annie, I've been thinking about your brother George. When he comes, I, I'd like you to brooch something to him. Brooch? What's the matter with brooch? It's not English. When I went to night school, it was brooch. Well, in day school, it's brooch. Oh, don't, don't surround me with it. Seriously, Annie, I've been thinking. You say he's not well, George. And I've been thinking, why, why should he knock himself out with all that cutthroat competition in New York? Well, I, I got so many friends here. I'm pretty friendly with some big lawyers in town. I can set George up here. That's awful nice of you, Joe. No kid, it ain't nice. I want you to understand something. I'm thinking of Chris. You see, you get older. You want to feel that you accomplished something. Now, my only accomplishment is my son. I ain't brain. That's all I accomplish. Now, yeah, 80 months, your father will be a free man. Who's he going to come to, Annie? You. His baby. You'll come old and mad in your house. That can't matter anymore, Joe. I don't want that to come between us. I can only tell you that could never happen. You're in love now, Annie. I'm older than you, and believe me, I know. A daughter is a daughter. And it could happen. That's why I'd like you and George to go to him in prison and say, Dad, Joe wants to take you into the business when you come out. You'd have him as a partner? No, no partner. Good job. I want him to know, Annie, while he's sitting there, I, I want him to know that whenever he wants, there's a place waiting for him. It, to know you've got a place, it takes his bitterness away. It sort of sweetens you. Joe, you owe him nothing. I owe him a good kick in the teeth, but he is your father. Then kick him in the teeth, then. Uh, I'm the one on the planet, and that's that. Another thing, don't talk about him like that. People misunderstand you. And I don't understand why she has Sir, a father, she... No. Why? No. What is it to a you? A father is a father. Now, Miss Shade. Didn't mean to yell at you, Annie. Let's forget the whole thing, Joe. Right. She's likable. Go and shave, will you? Right again. I almost forgot. Hiya. I promised I'd fix Kate's hair for the night. Has she called it yet? Always the smile, Lady. Yeah. Sure, why not? 
Come on up and comb my Katie's hair. Make her beautiful. She's got a big knife. I will. Hey, that could be a song. Come on up and comb my Katie's hair. Come on up, for she's funny. How's that for one year at night school, eh? Come on up and comb Well, where is he? Where's your mother? Upstairs dress. What happens, George? I asked him to wait in the car. No. Can you take a piece of advice? Now listen to me. Don't bring him in here. Why? Kate's in a bad way. You can't explode this in front of her now. Explode what? You know why he's here. Don't try and get it away. Drive him somewhere. Talk to him alone. Don't be an old lady. He's come to take her home. Do you know what that means? You know what that means. Try him somewhere. Find it out someplace else. I'm, I'm no. To... Will you stop being an idiot? Cut that out. Nobody's afraid of him here. And all the way to do, George. You've been sitting out there all day. Doctor said your mother isn't So well. what? She'd want to see you, wouldn't she? Been waiting for you all afternoon. Then you're expecting me. Didn't you bring another one? How about the beach then, Jim? Oh, honey, it's too hot to drive. Oh, and how did you get to the station then? Zeppelin? George, this is Mrs. Bayless. George! How are you? You're the people that bought our house, aren't you? That's right. Come and see it before you leave. I like it the way it was. He's frank, isn't he? Yeah, uh, well, 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 we'll see you later, folks. Uh, take it easy, fella. Thanks for driving, huh? Okay. Want some grape juice? Mother made it special for you. Good old Kate, remember my grape juice. We drank enough of them this yard. <coughs> How you been, George? Sit down. It takes me a while. Seems impossible. What? I'm back here. Say, you're getting a little nervous, aren't you? Yeah, towards the end of the day. What are you, big executive now? Just kind of medium. How's the law? I don't know. When I was in the hospital at Team Central, but outside, it doesn't seem to be much of a lot. Say, the jeans got thick, didn't they? What's that? Looked at him last night. Had a bit for Larry. You know, why? Afraid you'll forget him. What kind of remark is that? When did he start wearing hats? Today. From now on, I decided to look like a lawyer anyway. Don't you recognize it? Why? Where? It's your father's. He asked me to wear it. How is it? Smaller. Smaller? Yeah, he's a little man. That's what happens to suckers, you know. It's a good thing I went to him in time. I know that you're doing nothing left but his smell. What's the matter, George? What's the trouble? The trouble? The trouble's when you try to make suckers out of people once. You shouldn't try to do it twice. What do you mean? You're not married yet, are you? George, what? Are you married yet? yet? No, I'm not married yet. You're not marrying him. Why am I not marrying him? Because his father destroyed your family. Now look, cut it short, Chris. You know what I've got to say. Let's not argue. She's coming with me. You don't want to be the voice of God, do you? Ah, you know that's when you're trouble your whole life. Dab on your feet first. What kind of statement's that to me? You're a big boy now. I'm a big boy now. Don't come rolling in here. If you get something to say, be civilized about it. Don't civilize me! You're going to talk like a grown man or aren't you? Look, sit down, dear. Don't be angry. What's the matter? Now, what happened? You kissed me when I left, and you now you're... My whole life turned upside down since then. Couldn't go back to work after you left. I wanted to go to Dad and tell him you were to be married. It seemed impossible not to. He loved you so much. And he, and he we did that terrible thing. Not even sent him a card at Christmas. I didn't see him once since I got home from the war. Annie, you don't know what was done to that man. You don't know. Of course I know. Oh, you can't know. You wouldn't be here. Dad came to work that day. Then I phoned King to him and showed him the cylinder heads. They were coming out the process with defects. So Dad went directly to the phone and called here. Told Joe to come down right away. But the morning passed. No sign of Joe. So Dad called again. But this time he had over a hundred defectives. The army was screaming for stuff. And Dad didn't have a thing to ship. Are you through yet? No, I'm not through yet. Dad was afraid. He wanted Joe there if he was going to do it. But Joe can't come down. He's sick. Sick. He suddenly gets the flu. Suddenly. 
but he promised to take responsibility. Do you understand what I'm saying? On the phone, you can't have responsibility. Coaching always been our phone call, and that's exactly what he did. They knew he was a liar the first time. But in the field court, they believed that rotten lie. And now Joe's a big shot, and your father's the patsy. Now tell me, what are you going to do? Eat his food? Sleep in his bed? Tell me, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, George? He's too smart for me. I can't do a phone call. Then how dare you come in here with that rock? George, the court? The court didn't know your father, Annie. Did you know him? You know your heart, Joe did it. Boy, your boss will throw you out of here. She knows. She knows. Get him out of here, Annie. Get him out. I know everything you said. Dad told that whole thing in court. The court didn't know your father, Annie. Shh. But you say anything, George. You know how quick he can lie. I'll ask you something. And look me in the eye when you answer me. I'll look in the eye. You know your father? I know him well. And he's the kind of boss who had 121 cylinder heads to repair and ship out without even knowing about it. He's that kind of boss. That's the same Joe Keller who wouldn't leave his shop at night without first going out to check that all the lights were out. The same Joe Keller. The same man who knows how many minutes a day his workers spend in the toilet. The same man. And my father, that frightened mouse who went by a shirt without Sunday alarm. That man who dared do such a thing on his own. All his own. And because he's a frightened mouse, here's something else he'd do. Try and shift the blame onto somebody else, because he's not man enough to take it. If you tried in court and it didn't work, the fool like you, it works. Chris, you're a liar to yourself. Don't talk like that. What's the matter, George? The court record was good enough for you all these years. What happened? Why did you believe it all these years? I believed it. I believed it because you believed it. That's the truth, Chris. I believe everything because I thought you did. But today I heard it from his mouth. From his mouth, it's altogether different from the record. And he knows him and knows your father. Well, believe it from his mouth. Your father took everything we had. I can't beat that. But she's one out and he's not going to grab it. Get your things. Everything they have is covered with blood. You're not the kind of girl to live with that. Now get your things. Annie, you're not going to believe that. You know it's not true, don't you? How can he tell you it's his father? None of these things have even crossed your mind. Of course they cross my mind. Anything can cross your mind. He knows, he knows! The voice of God. Then tell me this, Annie. Why isn't his name on the business? What the hell's that got to do with it? Tell me, Annie, why isn't his name on the business? Even when I don't own it? <laughs> Who are you kidding? Who gets it when he dies? Open your eyes. Isn't that the first thing they do? The way they love each other? J.O. Keller and son? I'll settle it. If you want to settle it, are you afraid to? What do you mean? We go to him. In five minutes, we'll have the answer. Are you afraid of the answer? I know the answer. But my mother isn't well. I don't want to fight here now. Let me go to him. I don't want to fight here now. What more do you want? Someone's coming. You're not going to speak another word about this, you hear? If you go soon, I'll call the cab. You are coming with me. And don't mention Mary. We haven't told her yet. You are coming with you me. You understand? Don't, George. I'm not going to start anything now. Stay here, no more arguments. Why would he argue? George, 
she and us have no argument. How could we have an argument, George? We all got hit by the same lightning. How can you? Did you see what happened to last? I would like you to know, George, 
I would like him to know any time he wants, he's got a place with me here. I, I would like him to know that. It's your thoughts, Joe. Don't you know that? I imagine it, but that could change, too. Steve was never like that. He's like that now. He'd like to take every man who made money in the water, put him up against the wall. You got a hell of a lot of bullets. You better not get any. That's a sad thing to hear. What, Joe? What'd you expect him to think of yet? I'm <laughs> sad to see he hasn't changed. All the time I knew him, George, 25 years, that man never learned how to take the blame. Well, you must remember these things, George, because the way you come in here, you don't look like you do remember it. Like that time in, uh, in 37, when we had that shop in Flood Street, and he damn near blew us all up by leaving that heater on without water for two days. You remember that? He wouldn't admit it was his fault. I had to fire a mechanic to save his face. You remember that, George? Yeah. I, I'm just mentioning these things because it's just one of a lot of little things. Like that time he gave Frank that money to invest in oil stock. Then remember it, George. Was it Frank's fault that the stock went down? To hear him talk, you'd think Frank was a swindler. And all the man did was give him a bad tip. I know those things. Then are... remember them. Remember them. There are certain men in this world, George, who'd like to see everybody hung before they take the blame. You understand me, George? The cat's on its way. Would you like to watch? Where well, must he go? Meet the midnight, George. Sure, sure. Have dinner with us. Oh, how about it? Why not? We're eating at the lake. We could have a swell time. Now you're talking. <laughs> I've got a shirt that will go right with that suit. Sounds good and a half, right, George? Is Lydia? I mean, right, Lydia? Oh, I'll get you a date that'll I make know her. Say, oh. I know the girl for you, Charlotte Tanner. Mm -hmm. Call Charlotte, that's yeah, right. Sure, call her up. Go up and pick out a shirt and tie. You know, I never feel a woman here. Kate, you look so young. Things are all fell. You too, Joe. You're amazing when the same whole atmosphere is. Say, I, I ain't got time to get sick. He hasn't been laid up in 15 years. <laughs> Except my flu during the war. Huh? My flu when I was sick during the war. Oh, well, sure. Except for that flu, it must have slipped my mind. Don't look at me that way, George. He wanted to go to the shop that day, but he couldn't lift himself off the bed. I thought he had pneumonia. Why did you say he's never? I know how you feel, kid. I, I never forgive myself. If, if I could have gone in that day, I'd never allowed your dad to touch those heads. She said you've never been sick. I said you are sick, George. And did you hear her say? Oh, do you remember every time you were sick? I do remember pneumonia, especially not at the day my father was supposed to patch up cylinder heads. What happened that day, Joe? Kate, Kate. Oh, Frank. Did you see George? Yeah, Lydia told me. I'm glad to. You'll have to pardon me. I've been shown some ovation for you, Kate. I'll finish Larry's fire stove. Oh, you'd be interested in this, George. He's amazing George, the way he's done. George, He finished Larry's fire stove. Frank, can you not pick a better time than this? The greatest man who ever lived believed in the stars. You stop filling my head with that junk. Is it junk to believe there's a greater power in ourselves? I've studied the stars of his life. I won't argue with you. I'm telling you. Somewhere in this world, your brother is alive. Why is it possible? Because it's insane. Oh, wait a minute. Let me say something and you can do as you please. But just let me say it. He was supposed to have died on November 25th. But November 25th was his favorable day. Mother! Well, you listen to him! And then when there was a good and shiny moment, the kind of day you could have married on. You can laugh at a lot of it. I can understand you laughing. But the odds are a million to one that a man won't die on his favorable day. That is no, Chris. That is no. Why isn't it possible? Why isn't it possible, Chris? Anne, don't you understand? She just told you to go. I don't think we can go tell her to go. <laughs> oh, thanks for your trouble, darling. Would you ask him to wait, Frank? Sure, Frank. They'll be right out, driver. She's not leaving, Mother. Anne, you heard her say it. He's never been sick. He misunderstood me, Chris. He simply told your father to kill Pilot, then covered himself in bed. You better answer him, Annie. Answer him. I'll pack your bag, darling. What? I packed your bag. All you've got to do is close it. I'm not closing anything. He asked me here, and I'm staying till he tells me to go, till Chris tells me. That's all. Now get out of here, George. But it's not time That's to... all. Till Crass comes. About the case, or Larry. Now, get out of here, George. You tell me. I want to hear you tell me. 
Go, George. Don't take it like that, Georgie. Please don't take it that way. You packed her back. How dare you pack her back? Chris. How dare you pack her back? She doesn't belong here. Then I don't belong here. She's Larry's girl. And I'm his brother and he's dead and I'm marrying his girl. Never, never in this world. You lost your mind. You have nothing to say. Parker. Three and a half years, you've been talking like a maniac. Nothing, you have nothing to say. Now I see he's coming back and we have all got to wait. Mother. Wait, wait. How long? Till he comes. Forever and ever until he comes. I'm going to handle it. Chris, I've never said no to you in my life. But now I say no. You'll never let him go until I do it. I'll
when you go to bed. You can't sit up here all night. I'm waiting for Chris. Don't worry about me, Jim. I'm perfectly all right. It's almost two o'clock. I can't sleep. You had an emergency? Uh, one of my patients had a headache. Thought they were dying. You know, it's amazing the number of my patients that are half mad. No idea the number of people walking that bond loose. Why just coconuts? Money. Money, 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 money. You say it lying on me. Don't mean a thing. I'd love to be around my mad habits. You're so childish, Jim. Sometimes you what happened? I told you. He had an argument with Joe. Then he got in the car and drove away. What kind of an argument? An argument. Joe, he was crying like a baby before. They argued about that? No. Not that. Imagine. She hadn't come out of that room since you left. All night in that room. What did Joe do? Tell him? Tell him what? Don't be afraid, Katie. I know. I always know. How? Oh, it occurred to me a long time ago. I always had the feeling that in the back of his mind, Chris almost knew. I didn't think it would be such a shock. Chris couldn't live with a thing like that. Things are separate from the town. Or why? You got it. So do I, but not him. What do you mean? He's not coming back? No, he'll come back. We all come back. Those private little revolutions always die. Compromise is always made. Peculiar way. Frank. Frank's right. Every man does have a star. A star of his own honesty. Half your life you're groping around for it. And when you find it, and when it goes out, it never lights again. You know, he'd probably just get out somewhere to be alone to watch his star go out. Just as long as he comes back. Oh, I wish he wouldn't, Kate. One year, I simply took off, went in New Orleans. I went for two months in Melbourne bananas. I studied a certain disease. It was beautiful. Then she came. And she cried. And I came back home with her. Now, I live in a usual dark. I can't find myself. It's hard sometimes to remember what kind of man I wanted to be. I'm a good husband. Chris is a good son here. Yeah. He'll come back. I think he's probably got up to the park. I'll take a look for him. Good or bad job. This is no good for what she's got. What does he want here? His friend is not home. I don't like him mixing in so much. It's too late, Joe. He knows. How does he know? He guessed a long time ago. I don't like that. <laughs> what you don't like? Yeah, what I don't like. You can't fool your way through this one, Joe. You better be smart now. This thing is not over yet. What's she doing up there? She don't come out of my room. Don't ask me. Sit down and stop being mad. You want to live, you'd better figure out your life. She don't know, does she? She saw Chris Dorman out of here. At one and one. She knows how to add. Maybe I ought to talk to her. Don't ask me, Joe. Then who do I ask? I don't think she'll do anything about it. 
You're asking me again. I'm asking you. What am I, a stranger here? What happened to my family? You've got a family. I'm simply telling you that I have no strength to think anymore. You have no strength. The minute the struggle and you have no strength. Oh, you're doing the same thing again. Whenever there's trouble, you yell at me and you think that settles it. What do you want me to do? What do you want? John, I've been thinking this way. If he comes back... What do you mean, if he comes back? He's coming back. I think you ought to sit him down and you explain yourself. I mean, you ought to make it clear to him that you know you did a terrible thing. I mean, if he saw that you realize what you did... What you else think? does that cut? I mean, if you told him that you wanted to pay for what you did... How can I pay? Tell him. Tell him you're willing to go to prison. I'm willing to... Oh, you wouldn't go. He wouldn't ask you to go. But if he, if he thought you wanted to go, if he felt you wanted to pay for what you did, maybe he could forgive you. He would forgive me for what? Don't you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean. You wanted money, didn't you? So I made money. Why must I be forgiven? You wanted money, didn't you? I didn't want it that way. I didn't want it that way either. God, what difference does it make? I spoiled the both of them. I should have put him out on the street when he was ten, like I was put out. Then he'd know how a buck is made in this world. <laughs> Forgive him? I could live a quarter of a day myself, but I got a family. So. Oh, Joe, Joe, don't explain it that you did it for the family. It's not an explain. There's something bigger than the family. Nothing is him. bigger. There is to him. There's nothing he could do that I wouldn't forgive because he's my son. I'm his father and he's my son. Joe, I'll tell you. Nothing is bigger than that. I'm his father and he is my son. And if there is something bigger than that, I'll put a bullet in my head. Now you stop that. Now listen, you know what to tell him. He wouldn't put me away, though. He wouldn't do that. He loved you, Joe. You broke his heart. Yeah, but to put me away. I don't know. Sometimes I think we don't really know. In the war, they say he was such a killer. Here he was always afraid of mine. I don't know. I don't know what he'll do. God damn. Larry was alive. He wouldn't act like this. He knew how the world was made. He listened to me. To him, the world had a 40-foot front and it ended at the building line. <laughs> this one, everything bothers him. You make a deal, overcharge two cents, and his hair falls out. <laughs> he don't understand the money. He came too easy. Too easy. Yes, sir. What am I going to do, Kate? Oh, Joe, please. It'll be all right. Nothing's going to happen. For you, Kate. For both of you. That's all I ever lived for. I know, darling. I know. Why do you stay up? I'll tell you what happens. You don't have your supper. Make something for her. Sure. Uh, never mind, Kate. Right. There's something I want to tell you. I'm not going to do anything about it. She's a good girl. I'll do nothing about Joe. There's something you're going to do for me. You've made Chris feel guilty. Whether you wanted to or not, you've crippled him in front of me. I'd like you to tell him that Larry is dead and that you know it. You understand me? I'm not going out of here, Roman. There's no life for me that way. I want you to set him free. And then I promise you everything will end and we'll go away. That's all. You'll do that. You'll tell him. You know what I'm asking, Kate? You had two sons, but you've only got one now. You'll tell him. And you've got to say it to him so he knows you mean it. My dear. If the boy was dead, it wouldn't depend on my words to make Chris know it. The night he gets 
in your bed, his heart will freeze up, because he knows that you know, and to his dying day he'll wait for his brother. No, my dear, no such thing. You're going in the morning, and you're going alone. That's your life. That's your lonely life. Larry is dead, Kate. Don't speak to me. I said he's dead. I know. He crashed off the coast of China on November 25th. His engine didn't fail him, but he died. I know. How did he die? You're lying to me. If you know, how did he die? I loved him. You know I loved him. Would I have looked at anyone else if I wasn't sure? That's enough for me. What's enough for me? What are you talking about? You're hurting my wrist. What are you talking about? Joe, go next. Why, why must I? Please go. Let me know when he comes. Why is that? I didn't have any idea that Joe. I had nothing against him or you. I came to get married. I hoped. And so I didn't bring this to hurt you. I thought I'd show it to you only if there was no other way to settle Larry in your mind. Larry? You wrote it to me just before. I'm not trying to hurt you, Kate. You're making me do this. Now remember. Remember. <gasps> I've been so lonely, Kate. I can't leave here alone again. Oh, my God. You made me show it to you. You wouldn't believe me. I told you a hundred times. Why wouldn't you believe me? Oh, my God. Kate, please. Oh, please. God. I'm so sorry. God. I'm so sorry. What happened? Where were you? You're over spired. Where were you? Drove around a little. Thought you'd be gone. Where do I go? I have nowhere to go. Where's Dad? Inside, one more. Sit down, both of you. I'll see what there is to see. I didn't hear the car. Left her in the garage. Jim is out looking for you. Mother, I'm going away. I know a couple of firms in Cleveland. I think I can get a place. I mean, I'm going away for good. Don't look at me like that, Ann. I know what you're thinking, and it's true. I'm yellow. I was made yellow in this house because I suspected my father, and I didn't do a thing about it. But if I knew when I came home that evening what I know now, he'd be in the district attorney's office by now, and I'd have brought him there. Now when I look at him, all I can do is cry. What are you talking about? What else can you do? I could jail him. Jail not was anybody human anymore. Blame the others. I'm practical now. You may be practical. But you have to be. The cats in the alley are practical. The bums that ran away from the fight are practical. Only the dead ones were not practical. But I'm practical now, and I spit in myself. Going away and voting now. I'm coming with you. No, Anne. Chris, I don't ask you to do anything about Joe. You do. I swear I never will. In your heart, you always will. Then do what you have to do. What? What can I do? Spend all night looking for reasons to make him suffer. There's reason! There's reason! What? To raise a dead and I put him behind bars? And what do I do it for? We used to shoot a man who acted like a dog. But I was real there. We're protecting something. But here, this is a land of the great big dogs. You don't love a man here. You eat him. That's a principle. The only one we live by. You just have to kill a few people this time, that's all. The world's that way. How can you take it out of me? This is a zoo. A zoo! You know what he's got to do. Tell him. Let him go. I won't let him go. You'll tell him what he's got to do. Annie! Then I will. What's the matter with you? I want to talk to you. I've got nothing to say to you. I want to talk to you. Don't do that, Dad. Do that again, they'll hurt you. Exactly what's the matter. You've got too much money. Is that what bothers you? That's what bothers me. You can't get.
get used to it and throw it away. You hear me? Take every cent and give it a chance. Throw it in the sewer. You hear me? That settles it. In the sewer. You understand me? If it's dirty money, then burn it. Take my money. I'm a dead man. I'm an old dead man. Nothing's mine. Well, what do you want to do? It's not what I want to do. It's what you want to do. What should I want to do? Jail? You want me to go to jail? Is that what I want? Is that what you want? Is that where I belong? Is that what you want to tell me? So why can't you tell me? Why can't you say it? If you say anything else to me, tell me that. I'll tell you why you can't tell me. Because you know I don't belong there. That's why you know who work for nothing in that war. When they work for nothing, I'll work for nothing. Did they ship a gun and a truck out of Detroit before they got their price? <laughs> Dollars and cents. Nickels and dimes, war and peace. It's nickels and dimes what's clean. Our forgotten country's gotta go if I go. That's why you can't tell me. That's exactly why. Then why am I bad? I know you're a little worse than most men, but I thought you were better. I didn't look at you as a man. I looked at you as my father. Now I can't look at you. I can't look at myself. Give me that. He's going to read it. Larry. Larry? Larry? Go away, Joe. It's not far, you Why Chris. Why she say Larry? What? Go to the street, Joe. Go to the street. Don't tell him, Chris. Please, don't tell him. Three and one half years talking, talking. <laughs> now tell me what you must do. This is how he died. Now tell me where you belong. Chris, Chris, a man can't be a Jesus in this world. I know all about this world. I know the whole crap story. Listen to this and tell me what a man's got to be. My dear Anne, are you listening? This is how he died. Listen, don't cry, listen. My dear Anne, it is impossible to put down the things I feel, but I've got to tell you something. Yesterday, you flew in a load of papers from the States, and I read about Dad and your father being convicted. I can't express myself. I can't tell you how I feel. I can't bear to live anymore. Last night, I circled the base for 20 minutes before I could bring myself in. How could he have done that? Every day, three or four men never came back, and he sits back there doing business. I don't know how to tell you what I feel can't face anybody. I've been out on a mission in a few minutes. You'll probably report me missing. If they do, I want you to know that you mustn't wait for me. I tell you, Anne, if I had them there now, I could kill them. Now blame the world. You understand that letter? Sorry. 
He didn't kill himself for you and Dad to be sorry. What more can we be? You can be better. But once and for all, you know there's a universe of people out there, and you're responsible to it. Unless you know that, you threw away your son. Because that's why he died. Take care of yourself. Forget it. 